Hello YouTube, Chris Worden. Uh, thank you for joining us on the film. Now for those of you that don't know, this channel here is aimed at you if you are a UK business owner that is struggling with business debt. Our, our main aim is to help you navigate the world of UK insolvency so you are armed with all the information that you need before you make any type of decisions. Now today's video, by the way, if you like the channel, Give us a like, give us a comment and subscribe so you know when our next video is going to drop. Now, I'm going to talk about winding up petitions today. Um, listen, winding up petitions became almost a thing of the past since COVID kicked off because there was a moratorium in place which stopped people like HMRC uh, or like suppliers from issuing winding up petitions spit my teeth out from issuing winding up petitions to businesses that had not paid their bills on time now that all changes on the 1st of october next week so this is video is to educate you what are they how do they work and what are your options if one lands on your doorstep because mark my words we're going to see over the next weeks and months a flurry of winding up petitions going back out there as creditors get more aggressive chasing debts in so First bit of advice, if you're being threatened with a winding up petition, please, please don't wait for it to land on your doorstep. Get some advice early. Now, here's the process. So I want you to imagine a creditor. Could be a HMRC, could be a builder supplies. They've been chasing a debt for quite a few months and they're getting nowhere. They may have had a CCJ registered against you. Uh, but the next stage is they're going to issue something called a statutory demand. That's basically a demand for payment. Now, if you don't respond or agree to those demands, the next thing that your creditor is going to do is speak to a solicitor and say, Mr. Solicitor, I'm getting absolutely nowhere with ABC Limited. Will you please issue a winding up petition against them? Um, by the way, there is no ABC Limited. I'm just making that up. And then the solicitor will write to the court and issue um uh, ask for a winding up petition to be issued so they'll serve it to the courts and then the courts will serve it on your business and this is the critical point because seven days after that landing on your doorstep it becomes advertised in the london gazette and becomes public knowledge winding up petitions are not good for business but even more seriously your bank account will be frozen and it is impossible to run a business with no access to funds so after your winding up petition has been issued, you will have a court date, generally six to eight weeks after the date of it's been issued and you will go to court. But if the matter hasn't been resolved, the court's going to wind your company up and you will be closed that day. And then a liquidator becomes appointed on the job and they'll do a thorough investigation into the director, direct, uh, conduct of the director. Now, if you've let your company go through a compulsory liquidation, that is a big red mark and it does not bode well for you as a director in your conduct report. So what are my options? Listen, first things first, seek advice. If you are getting threatened with a winding up petition or God forbid in the next few weeks one lands on your doorstep, the next action needs to be to pick up the phone to somebody who can help you. Now, if you engage with an insolvency practitioner or an insolvency pro professional early enough, they may be able to formally or informally negotiate with the creditor. So an informal negotiation is just agreeing to pay, um, to pay them over a period of time. Now, depending on what your relationship is like with that creditor, um, you know, that may or may not work. But a more formal negotiation is something called a company voluntary arrangement. It's not suitable for every business. But if it's suitable for your business and agreeable to your creditors, that may be the best way of stopping this company getting forced into liquidation. Now, another thing you may want to um, try and do is get an adjournment on the winding up petition. You will need legal representation uh, to go down to court for you for the day. Obviously, that's going to be at your expense. And they need to give that judge a good enough reason why to give a 28 or 56 day adjournment. And in that adjournment period, what you could look is, is other recovery and turnaround procedures to save the business. So we've discussed a CVA. The, 
if you're a bigger business and a bigger going concern, an administration may be something that would be on the table or a pre-packed liquidation. And this is where an insolvent business sells the assets of the insolvent business to a new co, sometimes with the same directors. But this all takes time and you'd need to get that adjournment in place. Finally, another option to... Um, if you've been issued with a winding up petition, is to pay the petition. Pay the creditor off uh, and, and hopefully the petition will be withdrawn. But by its very nature, if you've not, if, if someone's chasing you for money for that long and they're not getting anywhere, it's highly likely your business is insolvent and struggling. So I'm going to end on this. Whatever you do, do not bury your head in the sand. Uh, I remember when my business was uh, in trouble some years ago and I did. I buried my head in the sand. I thought this is going to get better. This is going to get better. You know, I'm an, I'm an optimist. The problem is. It doesn't in many cases. And this, a winding up petition is the start of the road to your company being compulsory liquidated.